Well, good morning once again. Welcome to Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is Pastor Jeremy. I'm very happy to be with you today as we look at uh, chapter 5 of Max Licato's book, Traveling Light. And uh, today we take on that portion of um, Psalm 23, where David talks about God um, leading his sheep to uh, to lie down in green pastures and be stilled beside still waters. Um, and Lakato has titled the, the, the chapter, I Will Give You Rest, The Burden of Weariness. I will tell you this morning um, at about 3.30 in the morning, I woke up and um, had a very upset stomach. Um, Sarah and I had ordered some dinner in last evening, and I don't think there was necessarily anything wrong with the food. Um, the food tasted great, but it just didn't settle with me at all. And so uh, I have been awake since uh, about 3 o'clock this morning. Um, and it is currently about 10.30 or so. I have, uh, this morning as as I was sort of laying in bed, um, uh, go, going back and forth between the bathroom and, and bed, I, I sort of laid there and I thought, okay, I really, really want to go back to sleep. I really want to be able to sleep until the alarm goes off at 6.30 this morning. Um, and by about 4 o'clock or so, I recognized that just simply wasn't going to happen. And so I, I thought I'd get up and uh, and get a bunch of work done this morning and, and just be really super you know, successful uh, in these few hours that I had where there was no one else awake in the house and it's quiet. And and so I, I set out to do that. And as I sat at my computer this morning, very, very early, I recognized that, um, you know, the fact of the matter is I wanted to sleep. My body wasn't letting me sleep, but I needed to sleep. I was still tired. I wasn't able to focus well at all. The work that I was trying to do was just a jumbled mess. And so I left my desk and I went and I sat in our living room in a recliner and, uh, and just prayed that the Lord would give me a little bit of sleep. And uh, I think you've probably had this experience before. I think about 6.15, <laughs> I dozed off and then my alarm went off at 6.30 this morning. Uh, the purpose of this is to say that you know sleep can be elusive. Uh, sleep is one of those things we so desperately need. And Lucado talks a lot about that in, in this chapter. He talks about how sleeplessness affects 70 million Americans and is faulted for 38,000 deaths um, in each year in the United States. That's incredible. Um, and so this idea of not being able to rest, not being able to sleep. And I love how he um, talked about, you know, if an alien were going to come and, and visit this earth, and watch uh, 70 million Americans struggle to sleep, the alien would probably just offer this, this really wonderful bit of wisdom. Why don't you just go to sleep? It's not that simple. Our minds are rolling. We have thoughts. We have um, worries. We have desires. All kinds of things cause sleep to be elusive. I was really surprised when I read the part in this book about how sheep... Um, they, they struggle to sleep. And I, I looked that up, and sure enough, absolutely true. Um, sheep historically don't sleep well. In fact, uh, farmers and shepherds in the day of David um, <clears throat> had to go to extraordinary lengths in order to provide a place where sheep would actually feel comfortable sleeping. And, um, and, and once that green pasture was, was prepared for them, once that place was made for them, they would sleep. Uh, but outside of that, they struggle to sleep. And I love the illustration because the reality is we so desperately need our shepherd savior for a lot of reasons. We just yesterday looked at the 23rd Psalm in our worship uh, gathering here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. And, and we talked a lot about um, God's uh, ability to know us so well that he knows exactly what we need before we even ask it. And so he leads us to those places. Um, to give us what we need. Um, and in this particular instance, what we need desperately is rest, Sabbath rest. And um, I want to talk just a bit about that idea, 
Sabbath rest. Um, on page 40 of the book, Lucato writes this uh, about the middle of the page. He said, note the two pronouns preceding the two verbs in Psalm 23, verse 2. He leads me beside the still waters. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He makes me. He leads me. Now, <clears throat> Lucato is emphasizing the pronouns there. He. It isn't us who's doing it. It's God who's leading us to that place. It's God who knows we need that, that rest. And so he brings us there. We do nothing of ourselves to bring ourselves there. I want to focus for a second on the, the second word, though. What does he do? In the first instance, he makes me lie down. And in the second instance, he leads me beside the waters. We aren't necessarily given a choice. Uh, when Ethan was, my, when my son Ethan was a, uh, uh, a toddler, you know, very young, um, we did struggle with him and his sleep. Um, once he was asleep, we were golden, but boy, did it take <laughs> moving mountains sometimes in order for him to get to sleep. What we recognized is that um, sometimes the problem of him getting to sleep was our own fault, Sarah and I, because by the time he went to sleep, he was so desperately in need of sleep that he was he was what we call overtired. And maybe that was because we had had some you know, special fun family things planned that day and, and his nap didn't happen the way that it should have or it didn't happen at all. Um, Ethan was one of those children who stopped napping very young, much to my great dismay, but um, we, you know, he just, he just would not sleep during the day, and 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 uh, and so we recognized he was he was beyond the point of being tired. I wonder if you've ever felt that way. I wonder if you've ever recognized such a desperate need for rest that you are beyond being what we would call tired. Um, Sabbath uh, in the. Ten Commandments, God gives us the promise of Sabbath rest. He gives us the command to seek Sabbath rest. And um, he says that we should honor him. We should honor the Lord our God by remembering the Sabbath day and keeping that day holy. No work, not for you, not for your children, not for your, your servants, not for your animals, not for anybody. No work, only worship. Now, of course, this <clears throat> comes up so many times in our modern society. Are we really expected to do that? And um, here's the answer. Yes. God expects you to rest from your work and worship him one day a week. Now, the other part of that answer is we recognize in our modern society that may not necessarily be possible. Or is it? See, the thing of it is, is that we often think Sabbath and we think Sunday. Or we think Sabbath and we think Saturday in terms of Judaism. But the reality is, Sabbath is whatever day you're setting aside for the Lord. And so, for my case, right, it's really hard to set aside Sunday. I am working on Sunday. Now, I, I will be honest with you, very rarely does uh, gathering to worship the Lord feel like work to me, but it is. It's my job. And and so I'm working on Sunday mornings in, in order that the sheep that I shepherd have the opportunity to rest from their work in the Lord. And so I have to find another time. I try to use Fridays as my Sabbath time. And I think we have to think a little bit about how we're going to rest from our work. Okay, so if you're a person who works six days a week, you only get one day a week off, it's kind of hard to set that aside and do nothing. That's when you need to get the stuff done in the house and do your laundry and get your groceries and blah, 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 blah. I do all of that. I try to do all of that on Friday, on my day off. So some people would say, well, you're not really taking a Sabbath rest. I feel that I am though, because everything that I do on Fridays, to the best of my ability, I try to approach it from a place of worship. That I'm not working for myself, I'm working for the Lord. I'm working for my family. So yeah, maybe I'm doing the laundry, but I'm trying to do it in such a way that I recognize this is a service to my family and therefore I'm honoring the Lord with it. 
I'm not doing something for my greater gain. I'm doing something for their greater gain. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, whatever it is, mowing the lawn or something of that nature. Now, okay, people might say I'm just, you know, making excuses. That isn't what God means. He really means you're supposed to rest. Yeah, I get that. But if I can't, if the reality of this modern world is that I can't, isn't it okay for me to find some way to find that worshipful rest in the Lord? Whatever it is I do to find that. I have to tell you, there are so many times where I have worked all day, nine hours or something by the time Ethan and Sarah get home on Friday. And am I tired? Yeah, I'm tired. But I feel so refreshed. The things that needed to be accomplished are done, and I have done them all the while thinking about my service to the Lord, my service to my family and how that honors the Lord, how I am, how I am establishing an example for my son in that particular instance. And so I find Sabbath rest in that. And if you disagree with my understanding of Sabbath, that's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to say that's the only understanding. I'm just saying here's one possible way that I have been able to work out the idea of Sabbath. Now, I also will tell you this. I try to set aside one Friday a month where I don't do that stuff. Where I do something that is whatever I want to do to just sort of refresh my brain. Maybe I read a book. Um, maybe I, I go down in my, my shop in the basement and work on a project. Um, maybe I do some kind of gardening project that I've had planned. Something to just take my mind off of everything and give me some really quality time with the Lord to talk with him, think through things. I'll tell you, I think some of my best uh, message writing happens in those moments on Fridays when I'm just sitting talking with the Lord. I encourage you towards this understanding of Sabbath. The reality is this, we need rest. We need to lay down with the Lord. We need to rest in him. We've got to find a way to shut everything off and get together with God. I think that's a very pure understanding of Sabbath rest. So I hope you'll find a way to do that. And what I want to encourage you this week is this. When we're talking about laying down baggage, right? Our, our baggage sheets that we've been working on, we're talking about getting rid of this baggage that we carry um, uh, with us so much. Um, I want you to write on the sheet, my Sabbath rest is. And if you can't fill that in right now, then I think what you ought to spend this week trying to figure out is how can you, when can you, when will you? Remember, he makes you, he makes you to do this. He, he leads you to do this. When will you rest in the Lord? One last stop for today. I hope I pray for you, right, that this final saying isn't true. People say, oh, we'll have plenty of time to sleep when we're dead. Don't wait until your life comes to an end to rest in God, our Father, your shepherd, Yehovah Ra'ah. Do it now. Feel his peace and his comfort. You know what? That means you're going to have to let go of some stuff. You have to drop that baggage. Let him pick it up. But give yourself the opportunity to find some rest. Hope you have a great week this week. Hope you have a restful week. And I look forward to meeting together with you next week for chapter six. Blessings to you all.